Hello again, higher algebra students, back here with day two of unit 11, which is a, a follow-up on the simplifying, multiplying, and dividing algebraic fractions um, that we had from uh, our previous lesson. So we'll jump right into it here. Um, our learning targets, again, same as, as lesson one, really to be able to simplify, multiply, simplify, multiply and divide these uh, algebraic fractions, polynomials, and the like. Um, much the same process we're going to discuss, just a little deeper in this lesson. So as a quick follow-up, just a reminder, so to multiply fractions, it's really numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. And then we're looking for ways to simplify from there. Um, can we reduce through a, a common factor and so forth? Um, when we're dividing, again, we're going to end up with our uh, dividend here. Our first fraction stays as is, but our second fraction is going to flip and then multiply. Um, so again, that, that idea of flip and multiply where the, the divisor is what gets flipped around um, and we multiply. And again, when we do this, we're looking for, again, any common factors that we can um, simplify out. So this is really just the 11 over three because both of those have an X plus two. So you wouldn't need to um, really distribute here because the, the factored form of the X plus two um, or having that factored out already, I should say, is is going to make our life easier. Now, one additional piece to look at is situations where, um, again, where we have really just simplification occurring. There's no multiplication or division here, but if we look at this problem as now three separate fractions, 15a over 3, uh, 12b squared over 3, and 9 over 3, um, this is a situation where separating this out can be helpful because we can reduce each one individually. Um, and we didn't need to separate out. If you can see right now that that three is a common factor here for all these, then that really takes care of it. Um, but 15a over three really is just 5a because 15 divided by three is five. So it's really 5a over one. Uh, 12b squared over three is really four. Oh, sorry, this is plus really four B squared over one. And then nine over three is really three over one. Now we don't really need the, the one there as a common denominator. So what we really have is five A plus four B squared plus three. And there is our, uh, again, simplified form here. So now moving into some, uh, some additional work with these is the idea of Maybe we are given the polynomial that that if we factored it would make our lives a little easier. So again, back to that idea of if we keep, you know, before we distribute or before we FOIL, we keep these factored forms separate. We can um, have, a, have a situation where we start out with a polynomial and actually factor it to make our lives a little easier. So, so just a reminder here, uh, if we're looking for two numbers that multiply to two and add to three, we can rewrite this as x plus two times x plus one. Um, so it's factored now. And again, if we were to say have a fraction that happened to have, um, if this would have all been over say X plus two, now if this was over X plus two as a denominator, now you can see the value in factoring because now we see that the, the X plus two is the common factor here. And so our answer would simply be an X plus one. So when you look at this, the original, this wouldn't be immediately obvious, but again, the idea of factoring is what allowed us to see that. So when we look at a problem like this here, um, if we again factor the, factor the numerator, so factoring the numerator here, again, we're looking for two values that multiply to 10 and add to negative seven. Okay, so we have two negative terms here. So it looks like we're gonna have X minus five, X minus two is what this factors to here. Again, uh, the, the last term, negative five times negative two is the plus 10. And we'd have outside would be negative two X and negative five X, which is negative seven X when you add them up. And again, our denominator here is still the X minus two, which is was the original denominator. And again, when we look at this, we see the fact that we have an X minus two in the numerator and an X minus two in the denominator. So we are simply down to an X minus five for our final answer here. And again, you see that value of factoring to begin with. So here's just a couple more that, that we're gonna work on in class, but I'll do them here as part of this video. So first one here, I'm looking for two terms that multiply to negative 14, but add 
to uh, positive 13. So this would be an x plus 14, x minus 1. Again, uh, 1, or excuse me, 14 times negative 1 is negative 14. And if you do the uh, outside and inside of FOIL, we end up with a negative 1x and a plus 14x, and that would be plus 13. And again, the x minus 1 is in the denominator. And here we go now as we factored. Um, we reveal that there's an x minus 1 in both the numerator and denominator, so we end up with a final answer of x plus 14. Uh, now, the second one here brings on an, uh, another um, skill that, that can be helpful here, and that's recognizing when, that, when we have a perfect square binomial. So whenever we are subtracting a perfect square like this, again, what we're going to do is just rewrite that as x plus and x minus the square root of that perfect square. So here, x plus 3 and x minus 3 is the same as x squared minus 9. And that is, it, again, that's because outside and inside offset each other. We'd have a negative 3x and a positive 3x. So whenever we have this perfect square binomial, we can just do plus or minus that. So if it's x squared minus 4, x squared minus 9, x squared minus 16, x squared minus 25 would be x plus 5, x minus 5, and so on. Uh, again, we still have an x minus 3 in the denominator. And as we can see here, we had an x minus 3 in the numerator and an x minus 3 in the denominator, which left us with x plus 3 as the only term left. So now we bring back in the multiplication and the idea of can we factor to help? So we see we have a 1 and a 4 here, but really what we're most interested in is, is there a way to link these two terms? And so what we'd really like to see is, is there an x minus 6 in this original uh, second degree polynomial. So um, can we rewrite x squared minus 9x plus 18 as x minus 6 times something? Well, x minus 6 and x minus 3 here, uh, negative 6 times negative 3 is a positive 18, and a negative 6x and a negative 3x is a negative 9x. So that does work. So we can rewrite that in factored form of x minus 6 and x minus 3. And then we still have that x minus 6 there. So if I combine all of these, my numerator, again, if I multiply by 1 here, my numerator is really x minus 6, x minus 3. Technically, there's a 1 out there. Um, and my denominator is 4 and then an x minus 6. So naturally, I could distribute that 4 if I wanted to. But again, I don't really want to because I already have my x minus 6 in my numerator and my denominator. And so I'm left with a numerator of x minus 3 and a denominator of 4. That is our simplest form. So that would be our final answer. So again, just a couple more examples here. Um, first, we have a perfect square binomial. So again, we can rewrite that as x plus 2, x minus 2, as we can with any perfect square binomial. And when I say perfect square binomial, again, I mean that that second term is minus a perfect square, um, which 4 is because it's 2 squared. And we have x plus 2 in the denominator. So we have an x plus 2 in the numerator and x plus 2 in the denominator. So we just are left with x minus 2. Uh, again, the other version here is where factoring right out of the gate would be helpful. So again, we're hoping that an x plus 5 is one of the factors in the numerator. And if you do that uh, with an x minus 4, if you can um, factor it out that way, you can see our out outside is negative 4x, our inside is positive 5x, which adds up to a plus 1x, and 5 times a negative 4 is negative 20. So this does work. Uh, x plus 5 here stays in the denominator, so when we start to uh, simplify here, we have an x plus 5 in both, so our final answer would just be x minus 4. So dividing by fractions here um, is, it, it's a can be a complicated process to see. And again, probably the easiest way to just get in the habit of, of talking about is to flip and multiply that divisor. Um, but one thing to think about here is this, the answer to this one is 20. And so if you think about when you divide a fraction, um, or if you just divide in general, 12 divided by four equals three, well, that means the answer times the denominator brings you back to the numerator. So, um, that idea of when you divide by a fraction that's particularly when it's less than one, as one fifth is less than one, um, that you're gonna end up with a bigger value because again, if you go the opposite direction, 20 times one fifth, in this case, sorry, just times one fifth is gonna equal four because again, we're, 
we're now taking 20 pizzas, splitting it into uh, five groups and where every person gets one fifth of all the pizzas. So everybody gets four pizzas in this situation. So, um, so that idea of flip and multiply uh, is again, the notion of trying to catch the fact that when you divide by a fraction um, that's smaller than one, you make your life a little easier when you see that that's gonna lead to a bigger value. So here, uh, we again, w the first thing we're gonna do is just look at this as we did the multiplication. Since multiplication becomes a little easier for us to see, but what that reveals to us when we flip and multiply, it reveals that we have this now x plus two in the denominator, um, which maybe wasn't immediately obvious there when it was in the numerator as the divisor. So what we're going to try to do is just like we did when we were looking at multiplication is we're going to see if we can factor that first term here, the first term numerator. And is there an x plus 2 in there? Well, it is x plus 2 and x plus 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. And 2x and 2x when you FOIL is 4x uh, for that middle term. So when we multiply this again by x plus 2, we now see that we have that x plus 2 in our numerator and that x plus 2 in our denominator, which leaves us with an x plus 2 still in that numerator, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, and then an 11 and a 3. Um, because there were two x plus 2s here, I, I could have also written it as x plus 2 squared over 3, not, not equals, times, times 11 over x plus 2, now keep in mind, if we had x squared over x, that's the same as x to the 2 minus 1 or just x. Same thing here. When we have a squared term over just a single exponent, so in this case that would be a, a, sorry, an exponent of 1, what that really means is we're able to simplify out one of the x plus 2s, but not both of them. Um, and so I, it didn't really matter which of these two I simplified out. Um, but if you write it like this, perhaps that's a little easier to see that you had two x plus twos in the numerator, but only one x plus two in the denominator. So there's still going to be an x plus two left over in the numerator. Um, so in other words, again, what I couldn't do, and I'll erase this right after I do it, what I couldn't do is say, oh, I'm, multi I'm taking this x plus two down here. And so I'm just getting rid of all the x plus twos in the numerator. Okay, you can't do that. It's, it's a one for one match. And so the x plus two one of the x plus twos can get crossed out with that x plus two in the denominator, as I did here with the original uh, blue um, cross outs there. Um, so in the end, we end up with this answer of we still have that x plus two in the numerator, um, one of them, and then the 11, and then we divide that by three. And again, you could put the 11 out front. That might be a little um, more common sort of notation to use here, but, um, but this would be our answer. Okay, so a couple more here just to, to practice on our own. So um, I'm going to do this in one step of recognizing that I do have a perfect square binomial here. So I'm just going to rewrite that as x plus 9, x minus 9. And that's, again, all over 3x. And then I'm going to flip that second fraction, the divisor there. And what I see here then is, again, I have an x minus 9. That simplifies out. And so in the numerator, I have 7x squared and an x plus 9 still, all over 3x. And then one final step here is that I do have an extra x here that I can simplify out. So you can see here I have an x squared in the numerator and an x in the denominator. So I have one final action to take here, and that is just to rewrite this as 7x and then x plus 9 all over three. So again, that's just once I separate out those terms, I had um, a remaining x there to simplify out um, beyond the x minus nine. And for the second one here, you'll see a similar kind of strategy as we look at, uh, again, the, the flip and multiply on the second, on the, on the divisor here. So we're gonna have x minus two over x minus three. So that one just flipped again there. Um, turn this into multiplication. Uh, the first one will not flip again as the, as the dividend, and so we take that x squared minus 6x plus 9. And again, you can see what we'd like to have it offset ultimately is this x minus 3 right here. 
So do we have an x minus 3 in there? And, and it does end up that we have x minus 3. And then another x minus 3, actually. So you can see now we ended up with this similar um, situation to what we saw previously, where this is actually x minus 3 squared. And again, that's negative 3 times negative 3 is the positive 9. And minus 3x and minus 3x is the minus 6x. So I'll just rewrite it like this again. Um, now, in this case, to show this up front rather than after the fact. And so what we can do is we have one of these x minus 3s in the denominator, but two of these x minus 3s in the numerator. So that leaves us with an x minus 3 in the numerator along with the x minus 2, and then all of that over 5. And again, we could now uh, foil this if we really wanted to, um, and we'd get x squared minus 5x plus 6. Uh, but we do not have to do that. We can just leave our final answer just like this and move forward from there, knowing that we got at least one of those x minus 3s out of there. So the difference here, again, between the first lesson and the second lesson is in the second lesson, we're really trying to get those factored terms out. And those factored terms might not just be numbers now. It might be an x minus 2. It might be an x plus 5. Um, and so we're really bringing those polynomials along and the, those factored terms along from the typical kind of factoring out a 2, which is the same as reducing by cutting each number in half. For instance, 2 over 4 going to 1 over 2 to now actually factoring out uh, full terms of, say, x minus 3, like we did on that very last problem. Thank you, as always, for listening, and if you have questions, please ask.